What if we're still connected? What if our connections never depended on presence or sight, but on our shared desire to do good? On our shared ambition to go forward and on the common interest in what's to come? We remain connected, but never limited. As the world changes, we change with it, always adapting and finding ways to take it and transform what could be red lights into green ones. The path may change, but our speed remains the same. And so does our desire to reach that pole position. We are connected, more than ever, and ready to show you what our connection brought us in the past three months. And with you, we move forward, connected. Live from all corners of the world, this is Demo Day. Welcome everybody from all around the world at this first ever Startup Bootcamp Commerce Virtual Demo Day. In the last few months, we've been scouting, selecting and accelerating startups in the e-commerce domain. And today we'll show you the progress that they've made. This is actually the very first Startup Bootcamp program that has been running fully remotely. From the scouting, to the selection, to the accelerator program itself, and now the virtual demo day. But also all the sessions from A to Z of the program have been done fully remotely. With the support of about 100 mentors, we've been accelerating these startups. But also VCs were involved, angel investors were involved, and potential corporate partners that actually are looking for POCs to digitally transform them faster than ever. When we were in the situation that changed the world in the last few months, we were not stopped. We believe in fully digital and fully remotely. Actually, we already started investing over a year ago in a full digital platform. A platform that can accelerate startups from all around the world, fully digital, without the teams relocating to a physical location. I've personally learned myself that crises create new opportunities. And this is where entrepreneurship comes in. A real crisis transforms and real entrepreneurs take advantages of a crisis. This is what you will see today as well. Opportunities that are being created and leveraged by entrepreneurs of the future. It's your opportunity today to see what these startups are actually doing to transform our world even faster. This is what Startup Bootcamp is all about. It's about entrepreneurship, digital transformation, and growing new businesses. Today you will see teams from all around the world, from the United Kingdom, from Spain, from Finland, from Portugal, from Germany, and obviously also from the Netherlands. You will see the results of three months digital acceleration. We are very proud today to show you the results. And I know for sure that the startups are proud as well. So please sit tight for the next 60 to 90 minutes and see what digital transformation is all about. I personally hope to see you somewhere around the world in the next few months, either physically or remotely. Thank you. Hey, I'm Douwe, Program Director of Startup Bootcamp Amsterdam. And I've had the pleasure to work with these eight amazing startups over the last three months. As Patrick already mentioned, the innovation cycle that Startup Bootcamp had to go through, not just to survive, but to thrive in this difficult climate, more than applies also to all these teams. And I have to say, I'm very proud of what these teams have achieved and the pure grit that these entrepreneurs have shown. And remember, this is just the start of the journey together. There's a long way to go, and we hope that you get connected with the teams and join them on their adventure. When the pitches are done, you're cordially invited to join the startups in the breakout sessions and ask them all your burning questions and get connected. During the presentations, you'll already be able to drop the teams your virtual business cards or leave the teams a message. In order to do so, you do need to sign up on the right corner of the screen. If you missed any of this, no worries. I'll come back to this at the end of the presentations. During the scouting process, we looked at three themes. Customer of the future, product of the future, and the store of the future. 
We saw that customers demand more insights on the, their data, the products they're buying, and that they're engaging in new ways with stores and companies. The trends that we will go over today are new points of sale and payment solutions, customer engagement and loyalty, empowering the next generation marketplaces, and of course, sustainability. But first, I'm excited to announce Prince of the Netherlands and Special Envoy to TechLeap, Prince Constantine. In times of crisis, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship is extremely important because it uh, shows that especially small companies are able to, to pivot faster than big companies. And, um, and you see also in this crisis that uh, technology has been an incredible driver for solutions. And to apply those technologies fast, to bring them to market, is really, uh, really hard for bigger companies. And you see that the smaller companies have been incredibly rapid in, uh, in, their, uh, in their market entries. And it's not just about the startups, it's about the whole ecosystem. We've been investing for more than 10 years in this ecosystem and we don't want to see it go down the drain because of the crisis. And that's why TechLeap tries to support and will support them, um, the ecosystem and the startups and the venture capital industry to uh, be successful when the crisis ends. And like all of us, we have to uh, live in a, new digital, um, in a new digital world, find digital solutions. And we find that actually many of those are much more scalable than the traditional ones. Of course, we have, a, have to balance between the face-to-face, -face, the real meetings that are having incredible value. On the other hand, scalability of the digital solutions. And I uh, would like to shout out to uh, Startup Bootcamp to take their accelerator program and now turn it into a, a global um, digital um, solution and I hope that many more entrepreneurs will now benefit from the experience and the, the courses and the, and the network that uh, Startup Bootcamp can bring to bear. I'd like to kick off the pitch part of the program. First trend of today is sustainability. Fashion is one of the most polluting industries globally. This startup has built a solution to digitize your wardrobe and is making conscious fashion spending possible. I'm pleased to announce Wearing. Hi, I'm Bianca, the founder of Wearing. In my previous life, I used to be a banker, and believe it or not, one of the most stressful parts of my day began before I left the house. It took me ages to try and find the right outfit. I used to try on five different combinations, and this would take a toll on my self-esteem because I rarely got it right, especially for important client meetings. I had so many clothes, I could not see them, let alone style them and I soon realized I wasn't the only one. Our target market is 500 million urban women like me, who make up more than 66% of the total apparel spend globally. That's $1.74 trillion. They're professionals between the ages of 25 to 40, style conscious, sustainability curious, and use wellness apps like Headspace to reduce their stress. They are targeted by 5,000 ads a day and buy things they only wear four times on average. Let's explore the app together. We digitize their wardrobe so they can create unlimited outfits, receive outfit ideas from us, tailored product recommendations to fill their wardrobe gaps, what to wear for Sunday brunch, and also what to pack for their next trip. They're millennials after all. Not to forget a little bit of playtime. From our customer validation, we realized that user experience was the biggest barrier to adoption. Our main advantage is customer centricity. This translates into two things. We have automatic tagging and cropping all in under 15 seconds for bulk uploads and our white glove service that takes care of the hassle of taking the pictures. The current market is made up of old legacy and niche alienating brands. We are breaking down the barriers by creating a product that speaks directly to millennials, offering lifestyle guidance with diversity at its core. Our go-to-market strategy is a mixture between community building, collaborations with brands, 
paid marketing with influencers, but also some guerrilla tactics and pop-ups in major European cities. We're leveraging our all-important early adopters who we brought on board before our app was built to help gain momentum and increase our word-of-mouth referrals. We have multiple business streams, a B2C subscription service, a B2B proposition, which includes us selling our cropping and tagging service to players like Depop to help them drive sales and increase their conversions. We also have further upside potential from our white glove service, which helps take pictures of everything our users own, but also a cut of sales from the brands on our platform. And why us? I covered retail stocks at Goldman and spent a lot of time looking into the personal styling industry, especially working on the Stitch Fix IPO. My co-founder Hako is a serial entrepreneur and a tech generalist, but he also has a really good understanding of machine learning, which is going to help us build our tech in-house and also scale our styling capabilities later down the line. We started wearing in February, and our app is now live with a 200 user waitlist. We think we've got one of the best UXs on the market, so please download it now to ensure that's true. We of course validated our proof of concept with a 15% engagement rate on social. And we've also built the foundation of our machine learning algorithm. With your support, we aim to raise in order to expand our machine learning capabilities, implement our customer acquisition strategy, and finance our operations with an 18-month runway. If you leave this pitch with one thing in mind, let it be that we're creating a product that is going to revolutionize women's lives. We're harnessing the power of tech to make way for a new generation of closets. I'd love to continue this discussion. My details are below. Let's stay in touch. Thank you for a great kickoff, Bianca. One of the key aspects of sustainability is the use of products. And nothing is more wasteful than products that get produced but never used. Customer returns and overstock are extremely wasteful and expensive. And current processes to manage them are far from sustainable. I'm excited to announce Rebolet, who is offering an all-in-one solution to handle customer returns and overstock and turning them into sustainable profits by analyzing, processing, and reselling the items online. Hey, I'm Guy, the co-founder and CEO of WeWallet. Today you're going to witness how we make e-commerce a bit more sustainable by extending the life cycle of returned products. My whole team is happy to welcome you in our digital breakout room after our video pitch. We bought it, the all-in-one resetting service for e-commerce returns and overstock. Mid-sized like e-commerce companies want to increase their customer satisfaction with better return policies. While on average, every return item causes them 12 euro losses, as they don't know their value in the secondary market. By integrating with WeBullet, e-commerces instantly know the resetting value of the return items, then they simply send the returns to our facilities we take care of the role resetting process. Once received, we scan the items and inspect them and store the returns over our logistics service before we release them on multiple secondary marketplaces. We resell and fulfill the returns to create additional revenue from returns that would have been 
liquidated otherwise. Compared to conventional solutions, our system makes processing returns 100 times faster, immediately identifies the item's resetting value by analyzing up to 300 data points, integrates with multiple online marketplaces and predicts the best reselling channel, increasing the reselling profitability by 2.5. Our business model generates our revenue on three levels. We receive a monthly SaaS fee, charge a processing fee per item, and a commission on the successful reselling. Currently, we have one big competitor in the US and a handful of small competitors in Europe and a huge market to reach. We initially target 6,500 mid-sized e-commerce companies in the German-speaking area. We have run three paid pilots, recently established on partnership, providing us this deal flow of over 500 companies and process over 2,000 returned items. Receive government support with 200,000 euro in public grants from the Ministry of Economy of Luxembourg and the Investment Bank Berlin. And we are part of Fit for Start, Startup Bootcamp and the Web Summit Alpha program. We are currently preparing for a funding round to set up for the growth stage, investing in marketing, sales, tech and operations. WeWallets originated when my co-founder and successful zero entrepreneur Christoph Müller experienced a retail problem for one of his own companies and I first tapped into retail management during my studies at Stanford University. Together with our road team, we are balancing experience and industry knowledge with startup agility and tech. If you want to make e-commerce more sustainable, then join in our breakout room. We will let, we are waiting for you. The second trend of today is next generation marketplaces. And the first pitch is a perfect segue between sustainability and the empowerment of next generation marketplace. Fearing scams or damaged goods, people are often afraid to buy expensive products on a secondary market. I'm happy to welcome to the virtual stage Fitvocated, who is solving this by having an authorized expert or reseller check the products before they go out. I want to sell my iPhone to you. It's only two years old. It's in real perfect condition. Would you buy it? You don't trust it, do you? I see. How can you be sure of this is a good product? Do you know that because of the lack of trust, 80% of total marketplace value is not capitalized? Beyond economic consequences, lack of trust in second-hand marketplaces impacts the world with human and natural resources exploitation. Having to produce more and more products just because a still working product couldn't find a new owner who didn't trust on second hand. My name is Luis, co-founder of Bificated, and there was a clear sign in my life pointing to this precise moment. I was marketing manager at Junior Rudanko, the biggest shopping centers company in Europe, but promoting herds of people rushing to buy new products was the opposite to sustainability. It was something I was reflecting on for weeks, until I realized this. I had to be in line with my professional background to contribute with a responsible consumption and to provide users remote confidence to exchange goods freely. Bitficative introduces a new way of buying and selling high-end products from any marketplace, employing local commerce to verify products and thus fostering trust at the right moment. I shared an idea with a talented team and together we developed the superpower tool I am presenting today for people like us. With some over 50 years background in digital, retail and software development at companies from Eurostox and S&P indices. On top, we count on three awesome mentors linked to eBay and retail. Thanks to their experience, two years ago, the BFKT team built a second-hand marketplace POC. We analyzed over 3,000 buyers to demonstrate that they were three times more likely to buy used products like an iPhone, bike, luxury fashion, and were even willing to pay up to 20% over the original second-hand price as long as the product had been verified by a professional retailer. 
That was the key to success, professional verification. And here is how verification works. Our task begins when buyers choose to verify a product on their favorite online marketplace. The Vivificated system works in five simple steps. The buyer places a request for their product to be verified. The product is shipped to or dropped off at the nearest verified retailer. The verified retailer thoroughly inspects the product and records the entire process. If the product complies with the buyer's expectations, the inspector will provide the buyer with the video recording and a product certification. Lastly, the certified product is repackaged and on its way to satisfy another happy customer. What we built is not a marketplace, it's not a software, it's verification as a service. And its implementation is plug and play to any marketplace, helping them to improve trust and therefore to increase transactions for the second-hand economy. There is a huge market of $60 billion in the world, over 300 second-hand marketplaces only in Europe. As an example, considering a relevant Dutch marketplace and only four categories, we find an actual value of 9 million euros in potential verification commissions. And today, we are excited to share that we have just finished our verification as a service in record time. And we have our first client to implement it. Welcome by FAIR. We plan to speed up the connection between second-hand markets and local retailers so that we can boost sales of high-end products. To better execute our go-to-market plan, we need 250,000 euros to reinforce sales and technology teams. Do you want to see how we do promote the 21st century consumption trends? Then you would like to invest some minutes meeting our amazing team in the Insider session. Thank you. Not only is selling secondhand products a challenge online, so is generating quotes for services. Often this is solved by endless back and forth emailing of Excel quotations. I'm excited to announce the startup that is solving all this with a simple online tool called Smidjo. Smidjo, sell your service as a product. There's essentially two kinds of things that you could sell. You can sell a service and you can sell a product. Products such as groceries, clothes, and electronics have a quite straightforward sales process. You have a fixed sales price, which you multiply with a quantity, which makes it quite easy and cheap to automate. You sign up for Shopify and away you go. Services, on the other hand, such as manufacturing, construction, and translation is a completely different story. Instead of a fixed price, the price of a service depends on a lot of factors. So for example, the delivery time, the task, and its complexity. And you have to first manually gather all this information manually from the customer through phone, email. And then once you have all the information, you have to manually estimate the price based off this information. Me and my co-founder Patrick found this out firsthand when we were running a manufacturing business. We had to spend a lot of time on back and forth with our customers in order to find all the information we needed to make a price estimation. Even worse, most of our quotes went unanswered, leading to a lot of wasted hours. So that's why we started Smidio. It's a platform that automates the whole process and lets the customer do the pricing themselves. We offer small businesses a white-labeled portal where their customers can go in, enter all their info, and be presented with an automatically generated price. This saves a lot of time and hassle for both the buyer and the seller, and since we're essentially turning a service into a product, it allows them to be sold in a web shop-like fashion. The platform can be thought of as a toolbox for automating service businesses. So we provide automation, checkout, basic ERP, and even an API, but does not itself provide a pre-made solution. Our sales model is based on implementation partners who will implement Smidio in specific verticals. By offloading industry specifics from us to the partners, it allows them to focus on the support and allows us to focus on the core platform itself. The businesses pay between 20 to 100 euros per month, which we split 50-50 with the partners in order for us to build a close relationship with them and to provide a good incentive to support our customers. Through our partner Vector Express, we already have 20 users in manufacturing 
And due to Smidio's flexibility, we're able to create pilots in new verticals in a matter of one to two days by just adding small snippets of code. There's been clear interest in professional translation and the construction industry, and the pilots are showing promising results. We've purposely picked verticals that are very far apart, since if we can gather traction in those verticals, we can easily get everything in between, which is a market of which only 1% is a multi-billion euro industry. At the end of the year, if we keep going at the same rate, we expect to have 100 users in Vector Express and also have traction in the other two verticals. For the end of 2021, we're expecting to have 1,000 users, 500,000 in annual recurring revenue, as well as have saved 1 million hours small business owners' time worldwide. As for competition, we feel that we're uniquely positioned because we're the only platform that offers a low-cost, turnkey solution that has order management and pricing automation features. And from a growth perspective, we're the only platform that offers these features in an industry-agnostic way. The team consists of me, who does tech and design, and Patrick, who does customer outreach. Together, we have more than eight years of experience developing and marketing products which have been featured on news outlets such as The Verge, Gizmodo, Popular Mechanics, IGN, and more. Through the Startup Bootcamp Accelerator, we also have a mentor on board, Gert Jan Schilder, who has previous experience as the head of marketplaces at eBay. A platform like this needs to scale rapidly, and in order for this to happen, we need to offload the development burden onto a new developer, as well as provide proper support and documentation. For this, we're raising a seed round of 100,000 euros for a runway of six months through Leap Funder. And if you're interested in hearing more about Smidio and this seed round, feel free to stay around and join the breakout rooms after this session. Thank you. I joined Startup Bootcamp in 2014 because we were first-time entrepreneurs. I was 21 back then. And um, me, Boss and Sabi, my co-founders, we uh, didn't have any experience raising investment, didn't have, have any experience in building companies. So I thought we could learn a lot from, uh, from joining Startup Bootcamp. So that's why we joined. Back then we were a company with five, six people. The first people were working at SoundCloud. So that was really cool back then. Now we are with yeah, almost 200. So changed quite a lot, growing rapidly. Uh, this month, 27 new people joined. Dynamics changed. It's a totally different company. As SendCloud, we were, of course, positioned quite well before the crisis, growing rapidly as well. Uh, but the crisis even accelerated the growth of e-commerce, which, of course, helps us a lot. Um, and we've seen peaks up to 80 to 90 percent. Uh, so we've seen basically a constant Black Friday since COVID hit. And now in June, it's still lasting at the same level. So we hope this might be the new normal for e-commerce. So we took, took a lot of advantage from that. So we scaled up the team massively, uh, grown. It's been quite an intense uh, few weeks, uh, to be honest. So uh, to all the teams, best of luck. I've been there before, so I know how nervous you are. Uh, I screwed up a little bit. I screwed up a few pitches. So uh, good luck, guys and girls. And uh, yeah, I look forward to, uh, to seeing the pitches. Great to see our alumni doing so well. The next trend of today is customer service and loyalty. It can be very important to properly help your customers to understand what's happening with your products after it leaves your warehouse. This highly serial entrepreneurial team is solving this through creating a traceable customer experience. I'm excited to welcome to the virtual stage, The Loop. Hi, I'm Claire, co-founder of Deloop. Doesn't it drive you crazy when you buy something online and then later you can't contact customer service for any help? You try email, a chatbot, the call center. Oh, I absolutely hate it. And I'm sure you know what I mean. Well, we've been online retailers ourselves and we know that every online store in the world suffers from the same problem, the communication gap that exists between retailers and their customers. When customers can't communicate with a retailer, they leave and a huge number of them, 40% in fact, don't return. 
the cost implications of this are staggering. For example, Amazon typically spends $130 to acquire each of those customers, and then it spends $40 million every month trying to retain them. Well, we're starting where it hurts the most. With the 6 million active mid-sized online stores that can't afford the expense that poor communication causes. In fact, we are the first company to develop a solution that provides a secure, enduring and bi-directional communication channel between all retailers and their customers. Why? Because we know that good communication results in 63% more sales. Loyal customers who bring others with them, now that's the winning formula. Our team is a seasoned group of serial entrepreneurs, most of whom have worked together before, including my co-founder and I, who've worked on startups for 20 years, including taking one all the way to a $30 million exit to IBM. So Deloop, how do we do it? For starters, we created an incentivized augmented reality app, which is activated by a customer clicking on a label as their parcel is delivered. This simple process initiates the secure connection with the retailer. Through the app, they can communicate about everything, delivery or product issues. They can access technical support and make warranty claims. For the customer, it's easy and direct and a central connection to all their preferred retailers. For the retailer, it's just as direct. They can provide faster, more efficient customer service without third parties using the sanitized packet of information Deloop provides. This direct communication with their customers reduces personnel costs, and as their customers are happier, it boosts the retention rate. Plus, now they have a new permission-based marketing channel to not only this customer, but the entire Deloop customer base. Our solution forges a direct customer retailer connection, disrupting competitors like Zendesk and Genesis, who still maintain that middleman distance in what is a $60 billion industry. But our revenue model is a straightforward affiliate structure, which suits all retailers. It's familiar, easy and scalable for even the smallest retailer to adopt. Now, as I mentioned, we start with the mid-range 6 million e-commerce stores with an estimated revenue by the end of year two of over 17 million US dollars. And as we release the enterprise version of Deloop, we anticipate a jump in revenue to around 70 million dollars the following year. Right now, we have a paid pilot ready to start when we launch the Deloop app in Q3. We're looking for an investment of $600,000 and would like to invite you to a one hour meeting to further discuss our plans to fast track Deloop so that it can take its place as an important player in the future of e-commerce. If you have any questions or would like to learn a bit more about Deloop, we'd like to invite you to join us in the breakout room at the end of the pictures. Physical stores have a real challenge competing with the online retailers. This team is bringing the best of the online experience to physical retail. Please welcome Omnic. Hi, I'm Koen Bounds, one of the founders of Omnic. We're on a mission to turn physical retailers into the local heroes they used to be by giving them the best of digital in the physical store and the best of physical in that digital store. Because that's how we think shoppers will fall in love with retail again. Let me tell you how. So the main problem that physical store owners have is that traffic in malls and stores is decreasing while the costs are going up. At the same time, physical retailers face a growing competition of online. They have higher budgets, a wider range of product, and on top of that, they have a lot more data to build strong relationships with their customers. Physical retailer doesn't have that. No CRMs, no fancy profiles, not even email addresses in most cases. That's exactly what we want to change with our solution. We offer an easy to use, low cost, white label app that has one major goal, building relationships with customers. We do this by leveraging what makes physical shopping unique. Local presence, personal touch, feeling and fitting of products, and fun and leisure. In order to do that, we offer an all-in-one solution to become a local hero. It consists of three apps, that interact with one another. A white label smartphone app for the clients of the retailer, 
an admin app to manage content, but also all kinds of proximity solutions like NFC, beacons, and geofencing. And then we have the tablet app for the employees to service their customers better in the store. Then you might wonder, another app? Why would these customers download it? Well, simply because it's not your average e-commerce app. It offers a lot of exclusive value and special treatment that makes you want to stay in touch with the people from your local store. A few of the features that we offer are a personal stylist at your fingertips because we want to make it fun and engaging to interact with the people from your local store. In the store, you can scan products, get extra information and save them for later. Of course, we will give you a heads up when the product is almost out of stock or in sale. You don't want to wait in line at the cashier? No problem, you can skip the line and pay with our app. Automatically, you will be rewarded with loyalty points, not only for shopping, but also for other physical shopping stuff, like scanning, saving, reviewing, or simply by entering the store. We also offer a special buy staff delivery service within one hour or in evenings. It's even possible to have employees waiting while you fit the products. Okay, so suppose the client is convinced and downloads the app. That means the retailer has a lot of data at their fingertips. That way, building relationships becomes easy peasy. A retailer's most valuable customers live nearby. Through the app, it's easy to pinpoint these people and treat them accordingly. It's also possible to only show them certain propositions or retargeting via Facebook, Instagram, or Google Ads. The app also makes it possible for employees to interact with customers in a fun and engaging way. Employees know who their customers are, so they can offer them one-on-one -on -one styling advice in a super personal way. Then we think that employees should only focus on their customers. Having a cashier is not needed anymore, since we offer a mobile POS, kiosk, and a checkout to the app. That means employees can actually act as a personal shopper. That's exactly when our digital sales assistant comes in handy. We are building this product in India, where our technical team is managed by two Indian founders. They have strong experience in IT and operations. Both have worked for companies like Citibank and IBM. I represent the hustler type. I've worked for several marketing agencies over the last 10 years and also runned a growth hacking agency. I've consulted big retailers and experienced the data problem that we solve at first hand. The business model is straightforward. It's set up so that it's interesting for small players as well as big retailers. Therefore, we offer several plans depending on the size of your company. Up until now, we are bootstrapped. As we speak, we are launching our first paying customer. And after this, we have a couple of other leading retailers lined up to work with our software. We aim to have 100 paying customers in 2021. And in order to do so, we're planning to raise 200,000 euros. This will mainly be used for development and marketing. So we hope that you're as eager as we are to go Omnic shopping in real life, in a real store with real people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining Digital Demo Day. For now, we would like to welcome you in our breakout room. And if you can't make it, please visit our website, getomnic.com. Uh, we would love to stay in touch. Bye-bye. That brings us to the fourth trend of today, new points of sale and payment solutions. More relevant than ever are solutions that limit the interaction at the checkout. The next startup is offering customers to order, pay and pick up their orders without the need to queue. They just released a perfect solution to the current crisis that exists in the restaurant, hotel and cafe industry. I'm excited to announce no queues. Yeah, as you can see, wait by waiting, doing nothing, it's annoying. But this is something we do many, many times in our daily basis. Just to give you an example, we wasted two years of our lives doing lines and doing nothing. But how about if I tell you that we are building the solution that is going to give you back this precious time that you deserve? Hi, I'm Rafael Reed. I'm CEO and co-founder at NoQs, the app that allows you to order and pay everywhere, not queuing anymore. Magic? No, just technology in your hands. And how does this technology work? Through the Nokia's app, you can find places and products around you. For example, you can find a coffee shop and order and pay a coffee and a croissant and pick it up on the way to your office. Of course, without waiting in lines. You want to order something for delivery? Done. Whatever product you need from a place nearby, it will be delivered to your doorstep in 30 minutes or less. 
And if you want to go to your favorite place, great! You can also enjoy the benefits of paying with Nokius through our QR technology. For example, ordering a tasty wine on a sunny terrace that you love being served so, so fast. But wait, that cannot be possible without the businesses that support us. So we are already working with small businesses in Barcelona, Spain restaurants, coffee shops, and bakeries that are integrating the Nokia's one-stop shop solution to manage digital orders, mobile payments, and powerful data management to better understand their sales and client needs. They are not just metrics. They are real people that we support taking care of the backend so they can focus on their customers and build great connections in a personal and digital way. Since the official launch in January, we have already more than 150 businesses committed to be onboarded in our marketplace by the end of 2020. This results in more than 100,000 euros in monthly revenue. So making clients waiting queues, complicated payment terminals and all that stuff is not their idea of adding value. What gives really value is connecting with customers and giving them a great service. And for that reason, they agreed to pay us a 10% fee per each transaction. That's all by our side. We don't charge set of fees, no hardware required, or no extra monthly fees. And because we treat our partners well, we receive many insights about what we can do better than our competitors. Knowing that ease of use, simplifying processes, good services, fair pricing, and give themselves sales data are key to have our space in the market. And now I would like to introduce the NoQs team, that we are like a family. We are four co-founders with different skills, backgrounds, and also characters, with people like Lucy, a talented engineer and developer with passion for details that melts perfectly with her mind, the CTO and analytic brain of NoQs. Another engineer with formal experience in coding and also business intelligence and data science. But to balance, the tech side. We also have the art side represented by Tony, the UE UX designer that makes things beautiful, clean and useful. And of course, me, with former experience in the financial industry, leading product development of exchange, payments and trading platform. And don't have any doubt, we are the ones to make Nokia's a success. And yes, to be on the right track of the mentioned success and grow, we are rising 300,000 euros, which will be invested in human resources, marketing and sales, and also operational costs. Having by result reached more than 200 new stores and more than 2 million in annual recurring revenue by the end of 2021. We look forward to talking with you about helping more people save valuable time in their life and growing Nokia's to the next level. Please join us in the breakout room after the pitches. Thank you. Diving even deeper into payment solutions, we've already arrived at the eighth and last pitch of today. With a focus on quick retail payments through facial recognition, a complete contactless payment experience is coming. Please welcome Pay by Face. Introducing Pay by Face, where your face becomes a virtual card. Have you been to the local shops in your town recently and seen how everyone is wearing gloves and face masks and there's plexiglass at the cash register? We see this as an opportunity. Come post-crisis, for merchants to rebuild the trust and customer loyalty with their consumers. Um, McDonald's on average makes about $40,000 per minute. Um, so we uh, understand that time is money. Uh, with all this friction in place, like keep your distance and uh, wiping things down to keep them clean, uh, this is slowing down the ability for businesses to make that revenue they could before the crisis happened. So we've built a pretty cool solution, which is platform agnostic, and it speeds up the checkout using face recognition payment system that enables the customers to make a purchase completely hands-free. We've also built a merchant dashboard uh, so merchants can visualize their transactions 
and review their customers' shopping habits, which gives them a lot of information about their consumers, which um, is valuable for, for merchants. To create an account as a consumer, it's pretty simple. You just download the applications on your iPhone or Android, and there's three easy steps to create your e-wallet account. You just add your selfie, you set your PIN, and uh, you add your card on file, sort of like the Uber app. Um, we've even launched this uh, product in a coffee shop in Bucharest. Uh, it's a really popular coffee shop right smack in the center of uh, downtown Bucharest. Uh, in the first three weeks, we had over 50 people uh, create pay-by-face accounts and complete their purchase using just their face. We've had a lot of traction in the last uh, six months. We're participating in the Startup uh, Commerce 2020 Accelerator Program um, in Amsterdam and the Visa Innovation Program out of Bulgaria. And we're getting approached by large companies worldwide, um, large banks, large retail chains, to begin uh, pilot programs with pay by face in their stores. We have four business models that we are going to market with. There's a white label product, so we can completely clone the entire system and put someone else's logo on it. We're developing a mobile SDK platform, so our components can be inserted in other mobile applications. Um, we're focusing on the smart POS devices, that uh, devices that have cameras. Regular 3D uh, cameras are not needed. This is just basic 2D camera hardware. Um, our algorithms will run on that. And so now we can elevate uh, smart POS devices for, for face recognition payments. And we also have plugins and extensions, so we can get into building access with your face. We can uh, do check-in, check-out at hotel with your face. And basically your face becomes an access point uh, tied to your card on file. Our 2020 roadmap is to graduate from the two accelerator programs. Uh, to complete our pilot projects with large companies worldwide, uh, add more users on the system, and improve our product design. Then we want to go after a pre-seed round after we've validated the market fit and product solution fit. Our team is highly experienced. We have four core individuals on the management board that come from global serial entrepreneurship, financial uh, backgrounds, customer service background, marketing and sales backgrounds, and we have strong banking experience as well. Let's take payments beyond the transaction so that next time you go shopping for milk and eggs, you can check out as your favorite superhero. I invite you to the breakout room so we can further the discussion on questions you may have. And let's talk about the pre-seed round we are raising later this year. Thank you. And with that, we've come to the end of the presentation part of Demo Day. And I would like to invite everyone to join the startups in the breakout sessions you can find underneath the video. There's no plenary session after the breakouts are over. So from the whole Startup Bootcamp team, our partners and the startups, I want to thank you all for tuning in and spending your time with us. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the pitches and that you were able to make a valuable connection with one of the teams. We hope to see you next time. <laughs>